What's up guys, ZeroTech00 here and today as you guys can see this is the Xbox PC that you guys have seen in the previous video which was the part 1 apparently which normally was supposed to be the final part but either way guys today we are actually gonna remake this Xbox PC this is gonna be a makeover so I hope you guys enjoy this video and yeah what I'm gonna do in this video will be that I'm gonna replace literally all the components like the motherboard, CPU, RAM memory, stuff like that. Uh, currently the Xbox PC has a motherboard from a HP T620 mini PC including the CPU and the 4GB of memory RAM and now I'm gonna replace it all with a Dell mini PC, it's an Optiplex. 9020M mini PC and uh, yeah this is how the PC looks like and literally all the components obviously without the case will be in the Xbox PC so without any further ado let's get straight into this crazy adventure <laughs> I guess obviously the next thing that I'm gonna do will be to remove all the components slash uh, parts that this Xbox PC has and then I'm gonna preassemble all the parts from it into the original case aka the HPT620's mini PC case. Well, now it's time for the most interesting part, desoldering, because obviously I had to solder two wires from the Xbox PC's uh, power button aka the Xbox's normal power button onto the power switch of the motherboard, so yeah, time to desolder. And there we go, now the two wires are finally off the power switch of the motherboard. So with that guys, we can finally move on and install the new parts aka the Dell mini PC's parts into the Xbox's chassis. Before we do that though, I'm gonna start reassembling the HPT620 mini PC and then I'm gonna start assembling the new parts into the Xbox's case. Well, after assembling the HPT620's mini PC parts into its original case, I find it out that apparently my Dell mini PC's parts are a bit weird. Basically, as you guys can see from the picture, I don't have any standoff to screw the cooler in and I had to wait like one or two days to be able to buy some separate standoffs because this cooler was originally screwing in some special standoffs in the Dell's mini PC case which obviously I'm not gonna use anymore so because of that I had to wait a bit of time I had to put the project on a waiting list on basically the waiting line because of this but yeah, after 2 or 3 days I went to a PC shop, I got some standoffs and I was finally able to screw the cooler in, I mean the radiator, into the uh, standoff holes, I think that's how you call them. And uh, yeah, after that I was finally able to proceed further with the project. Now, before proceeding further with the preassemblation of the Xbox PC, I'm, no, I'm not sure if reassemblation is a word, but either way, before assembling the system back again with the Dell is mini PC parts, well, there is a slight problem. Now I'm gonna have to resolder those power switch cables from the Xbox's power button onto the Dell mini PC's motherboard. And the thing is that, this motherboard is a bit weird when it comes to the power switch. Uh, as you guys can see from this picture, the HPT620 mini PC had only 
like two points for a, like a power switch connection you now like I don't know if you guys know the power switch header on normal PC motherboards where you plug the power switch cable so you can turn on your PC by power button well instead of a header like that you have just points where you can solder a button and the thing is that um, let's just say that this mini PC, the HP T620 mini PC had only two points which made the job slightly easy if you know how to solder. But for me, on the Dell mini PC, it made my job miserable. Why? Because instead of two points, it had, I mean it has, four points. Yes, four points. And actually those four points, only one is the one which turns on the system and I had to make a very good guess using my multimeter on continuity mode which made my brain blow up <laughs> because of a lot of confusion, a lot of weird beeping even though I wasn't pressing on the switch. It was quite a roller coaster of crazy stuff going on but I finally managed to trace the, the right pin when I pressed the power switch the multimeter beeped at the second pin and as you guys can see when uh, my screwdriver touches the second point and then the ground point which is either the left one or the right big one I mean there are two ground points and yeah those four are the small connection points and apparently the second one is the point which turns on the system and yeah I finally made it to work yeah I had to do that test because otherwise I could mess up and apparently I was right the second point and the ground point are the ones who are basically turning on the system so I just had to solder the yellow wire onto the second pin of the power switch of the motherboard and then the white wire I had to solder it on one of the ground pins and I decided to solder it on the left uh, pin. Moving further there is a slight problem in this video I soldered the pins pretty much wrong I didn't solder them like I explained in this video and I'm not gonna show how exactly solder them either I'm gonna try to show you guys in paint because I don't really want to redo this again just for this video but uh, yeah as you guys can see from those points it's pretty miserable, it took me a few tries before doing that good guess with the multimeter so that's why the points look kinda burned, kinda messed up but either way I was very fortunate that I didn't broke anything on the motherboard, any trace, anything like that I was very fortunate about it and now as you guys can see from this other small sequence video yeah, the mini PC is finally turning on from the power button the Dell motherboard turns on by the power button of the Xbox is case which is very very good so with that guys we can finally reassemble the system without any problems hopefully Thank you guys so so much for watching this video honestly this part 2 was much much crazier than the first part honestly this time around I really worked a lot because I had to buy some standoffs for the CPU radiator then I had to somehow manage to rightfully uh, put the power switch wires correctly on the power switch of the motherboard so I could just turn on the system from the Xbox's power button that was quite a pain in the yeah there we go I finally fixed the problems and now I have a functional system I can play GTA 5 
I can play Minecraft, Roblox, CS2, CS1.6. I can play like any normal game, you know. I can't really play Cyberpunk or something like that on it, but still, still, it's pretty okay for normal gaming, you know. That's all, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Honestly, I really worked hard for this second part. And yeah, I'm gonna see you guys next time. And thank you guys for watching once again. See you guys next time. This time most probably with the normal generic antivirus versus malware videos since I'm pretty much done with these projects for now. Maybe in the future I'm gonna make more. Either way guys, see you next time. Bye bye.